What's up everyone, welcome to another video and I really apologize because I know that I'm uploading this video after quite some while and well I'll explain. So I actually had my graduation and yep I graduated and then I had to travel back to my home country which is Pakistan and I had some camera issues and yeah basically it took me two months to get my camera fixed. So I'm bringing you a very interesting topic today and that will be talking about my Google interview experience. I'll go over the entire process and provide you details that will help you to crack your own interviews, to get the interviews and to crack them. I'll be providing my interview experience detail to detail and this will help you to get your own interview journey started if you want to apply at Google or any other company and it will also help you to prepare for your coding interviews as well in general as well as for Google. So the application process was very similar to other companies so basically Basically, I reached out to a lot of people. I reached out to the people that were working at Google and I tried to get a referral because referrals are very, very important because they help you to stand out during the application process. They will make sure that your application is at least being reviewed and you have better chances to make it to the next round. So I got a referral through LinkedIn by basically spamming a lot of people, which was my technique back in those days. And by getting the referral, I at least made sure that my application was getting noticed. So after I got my referral, it took me about two months to get my first reply and that was the coding challenge and the coding challenge is basically the first part of the new grad interview process and it is a one hour coding challenge consisting of two questions that you are required to solve so the coding challenge was pretty interesting and for me it was pretty hard and so the difficulty and the topics of the questions can vary person to person because I had another friend of mine who went through the same process through the same coding challenge and they actually got a much easier version compared to mine while mine was much harder so my friend was able to solve it in about 25 minutes both of the questions and they were both easy but for me both of the questions were very hard and I was able I wasn't able to solve one of them and the other one I was just able to come up with a bare minimum solution and that was it so I was pretty disappointed heartbroken at this point because I basically thought that I'm not getting through but hey maybe it was because of this difficulty level that they gave me some kind of benefit or doubt and allowed me to move through their process so another part of that online coding challenge is the work style review assessment which basically consists of a lot of multiple answer questions that you can choose your work style from and I wouldn't say that it was challenging because it was basically something that you can do yourself it basically assesses what kind of a situation you would work perfectly in what kind of a team you would fit in and it also so like I guess assesses you work wise or maybe work ethic wise I guess but that was pretty simple and it took about 20 minutes to get through it so after this experience I was expecting a rejection because who would expect to move through the rounds after getting one question completely wrong not even a test case was passing and another question which I barely did like the bare minimum but surprisingly after two weeks I got an email saying that I was moved on to the on sites and this was pretty surprising to me but I guess that the difficulty level on my coding challenge compared to the ones that other people got might have given me some benefit or doubt and also there is the factor that I also did an internship at Facebook I'm not saying that I'm 100% sure that that worked in my favor but it could be that that also worked in my favor to get me to the on sites because maybe I was given some kind of benefit of doubt that I might do well on the real interviews so when I got my email that I was moving on to the on sites I made sure to schedule my on sites pretty quickly and that was because I I had a competing Amazon deadline offer that I had to make sure that I was also catering to. So I made sure that I, you know, like fastened my Google interview process so that I could make the correct decision for myself. And Google usually is very slow with your applications unless you have some competing offer. And usually with a competing offer, they really, really fasten your application process and make sure that you have some kind of a decision before your other competing offer. So after this, I had to schedule a call with my recruiter where they went over the entire interview interview process in detail and they told me about the rounds and there were five rounds one was the behavioral round which was the googliness round and there were four technical rounds and the recruiter also gave me some learning you know like resources so that I could be more prepared for the interview but I wouldn't say that they were very very helpful I would just say just stick to whatever you're practicing stick to your lead code questions or algo expert or whatever platform that you're using that works for you and just stick to practicing a lot just practice a lot 
And the recruiter also gave me a form to fill out, which was basically, it required me to fill out what language I was going to interview in and some of the details such as my email and my point of contact and stuff like that. Now, the recruiter did not go over one very important thing and I think that this is really, really important and it caught me by surprise while I was interviewing is that the language that you choose for your interview will actually impact how your interview really goes. So for example, for me, I chose JavaScript. So for JavaScript, if you're gonna choose JavaScript for your interview at Google, what they're gonna do is that out of the four technical rounds, three are going to be lead code style or very similar style questions. But one of the questions is going to be a JavaScript specific question it's going to be a web style question so make sure that you're very careful with what language you're choosing for example if you're going to go with python then they're going to give you an object oriented or a system design type similar kind of interview question so I just wanted to make sure that I share this information with you because it wasn't shared with me. And I thought even though it was a good surprise for me because I had good grasp over JavaScript and that one round was the round where, you know, I did like exceptionally well, where I was able to really stand out. But you know, it would have been really good if I knew beforehand so that I would have been more prepared just in case. So yeah, just letting you guys know. Now before the interview, I was like mentally prepared for it. I had Amazon in my bag, so like I wasn't like sweating a lot on it. I think that that really helped me to be like mentally prepared for the interview. Because if you're thinking a lot on it, if you're like going to worry a lot, there are chances that you might just mess up. Just be yourself, just relax for a bit, just go and eat your favorite breakfast or whatever you prefer and get ready to crack your interview. Well, that didn't go as well as I planned because I wanted to eat a good breakfast, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, I woke up like 10 minutes before my interview. I like ran crazy to the bathroom. I just made my hair with my like hands and I just washed my face. And I came back. I was like really sweating at this point, but gladly like the first round shows up and it's the googliness round and it's like a behavioral styled questions and stuff like that. And I was really prepared for this. And you can also be prepared for this by really preparing for behavioral styled questions. And you should know how to answer them. Go and read about Google's work culture and stuff like that their values and try to answer or mold your answers according to the culture or the values that google has so that the interview knows that you're going to make a good fit into the company that you're going to fit well into their teams and going to be a good noogler well for my googliness round i think it went really well the questions were really basic they were like very basic and standard behavioral questions nothing out of the ordinary i was able to answer them pretty easily and i had a good conversation with my interviewer i would just say the interviewer was a bit bland because they were just asking me questions forth and forth. They weren't trying to make a conversation, which I really found awkward, but you know, hey, it worked for me because I was like used to that kind of setting where you're just being asked questions and just required to answer the questions. The interview didn't really go deep into my experiences. So that was good because you didn't want to be creating stories at that point of time. So yeah, I think that I did decently well on my first round. So I'm done with my first round. I get a 15 minute break. I try to eat a snack just to make up for the time. And then, you know, the interviewer comes in and they straight away ask me a binary tree question. I won't go into the details of the question because, you know, I've signed an NDA but it was a decently easy question I wasn't too worried about it the interviewer wasn't very conversational so I guess that was a bit of a problem but I think that it went decently well and I was able to come up with a solution I wasn't able to answer the follow-up pretty well but I think that that was because of the time that we had left so I guess that the interviewer did assume that I would have been able to come up with a solution at some point so I would say that it went average or maybe above average in this case the third round or the second technical interview was the hardest one and it was a dp question and you know i i really suck at dp i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna pretend to be that guy who's perfect you know and it went hell like hell it wasn't good i didn't do well at it i tried to use some kind of an approach i tried to you know like some use some kind of dynamic programming i guess the interviewer was intrigued by my approach because they kept saying that you know i'm really intrigued try to go into it try to go deep into your solution but you know i wasn't really really able to come up with it I just coded out the brute force at the end but that was it and like the interviewer I like asked them a few questions at the end because we had some time because I was stuck right emotional damn it so apart from that yeah this round really sucked the fourth round was a really good round it was graphs I had a lot of practice on graphs I had done a lot of DFS BFS and it was very very easy a question that I had nearly even seen across a lot of platforms so I, I won't repeat the question but it was pretty simple 
simple and the interviewer asked me to do it with one approach first and then they asked me to do it with another approach or with another another traversal technique and i was able to do it with both and they were really happy with my approach and how i did it so and they even provided me feedback at the end which is very weird because i know that they're not allowed to provide feedback there instantly maybe the interviewer didn't know but yeah it was really cool like having the interviewer provide you feedback there on point and they did say that i did really well on this but they also gave me some coding tips to perform better in the future as well now the fifth round is where i was really able to stand out it was a javascript problem and because i had been interviewing a lot for front-end positions i was extremely comfortable with javascript style problems i didn't even feel it to be like an interview i thought that it was really like a conversation with another senior web engineer where we were trying to solve the same problem at the same time we were having this conversation back and forth i was even asking them questions of, okay so why do you think this would work better than this and they were answering me like they were saying okay so this would work better because of this and this and it was really like having a conversation on your own project with some senior engineer and trying to learn on point and we were able to solve the question i was able to answer all of the follow-ups as well and i think that this round was the make or break for me because it really helped me stood out as a web engineer and i think that javascript interviewing in javascript also gives your interview a bit of uniqueness and if you're able to do well on the uniqueness point of view that is the javascript round you would be able to stand out even better because then the interviewers would be assured that you're good at web engineering or at javascript so you could see that in general i did really well on some of the rounds and i did really bad on one of the rounds and i would say that this is much better than doing average on all of the rounds because if you do exceptionally well on some rounds they would give you the benefit of doubt they would be able to know that you're able to do exceptionally at some point so make sure that you have those clutch rounds even if you don't do well on a few rounds it doesn't matter if you have a few clutch rounds as well in your bag well it took some time for google to evaluate me i think it took like two weeks and i was very close to my offer deadline of at amazon before they gave me the decision and then they went through the team matching phase where you know it took me another week but i was able to get a team match before my amazon deadline so that was good and i was able to make my decision comfortably and yeah google does that a lot if you don't have an offer or a competing offer they will often provide or take months to give you a team match so make sure you have a competing offer I would just like to mention that Google also evaluates your resume while making the decision. So how it really works is, is that the hiring committee sits down. They have your resume or your whole portfolio and they also have the feedback from all of the interviews. So basically all of that combined is going to help you in your decision. So maybe for me, if having that Facebook internship might have benefited me while I was going through that hiring committee process and it might have given me some kind of an edge to get hired at Google. So I'm just mentioning this that resume resume does play a role when you're getting hired as well. So I hope that you found this video to be insightful and that you will now have a good idea of how the interview process at Google works and how my journey went. And I really hope that this helps you with your journey as well. Stay tuned for more content because now I have my camera fixed. Now I have my entire setup and I'm going to be making more video for you guys. So yeah, stay tuned for more content. And please, as always, like this video and subscribe to my channel because that keeps me motivated to make more video for you guys. See you guys in the next video.